Magazine purchased ZBrush in 2021. The moment I heard the news, I knew what had happened at Magazine. Blender happened. Yeah, Blender happened. Cinema 4D had to purchase ZBrush because the Cinema 4D sculpting feature really sucked. Meanwhile, Blender was getting better and better. And as we all know, modeling and sculpting is something almost every 3D artist can't resist. So if Blender was getting better and better, then it simply meant Cinema 4D was going to lose a lot of customers to Blender. Now, magazine purchasing ZBrush was a smart move because you couldn't wait for three to five years more for Blender to get better at motion graphics and cripple the whole Cinema 4D down. So the best option was for magazine to tighten their sculpting tool set to get people hooked. At the same time, maintain and upgrading its position as an industry standard. You know, ZBrush without any doubt is the world's best sculpting tool. So they can't be wrong about a ZBrush move. Now, Cinema 4D purchases ZBrush and then begins to make some changes to the core of the software. The two main changes that really hit me was the ZBrush integration and also ripping the perpetual license of ZBrush and making it a subscription-based license software for all new users. Now, according to Magazine, in order to gain access to the new features, existing perpetual license holders would need to upgrade to a subscription. I thought so in the beginning, and I remember I made mention of this in my Cinema 4D vs Blender video. A lot of rumors are flying around as to how Magazine is going to ruin the software, but I personally don't think so. Just by looking at how well Magazine has preserved Redshift and Red Giant, I'm confident they aren't going to mess ZBrush up. My only concern is that, one, I hope Magazine doesn't replace Cinema 4D sculpting abilities by integrating ZBrush into Cinema 4D for sculpting and 2, which we all know might certainly happen, uh, the changes they are going to make on how they sell it. Maybe it might not be sold as a one-time purchase anymore. It's going to be on a monthly based subscription, just like how Adobe sells their products. Now, according to Cinema 4D, the main reason for this integration was just to enable Cinema 4D users transfer files between apps without struggle. I'm just not happy with their style of product sales anymore as a freelancer. That's too much. Most people think Magazine's main competition is Autodesk. No, it's not. It's rather Adobe. Same way most people might think Cinema 4D's main competitor is either Houdini or 3D's Max. Never. It's Blender. Notice how Cinema 4D leaves Blender out of its post all the time. Even with Redshift, check out the sentence they constructed. Redshift has become one of the standard third-party render engines for 3D artists, compatible with Cinema 4D. Houdini, 3D's Max, Maya, and more. You see, meanwhile, Blender also uses Redshift. Look, when it comes to motion graphics, no other software does it better than Cinema 4D, but their pricing is becoming outrageous. These Germans think they could rip us off because what? They sip beer or they think we fear them. Maxim, you better be careful. Anyways, a couple of features that have been added which I think need to be spoken of. One is the new global symmetry system for modeling. This feature makes symmetry available during polygonal modeling as well as sculpting, with users able to mirror edits to a model on any coordinate axis in objects or custom planes of symmetry. The new system also supports asymmetrical objects that have symmetrical topology, making it possible to keep making edits to previously symmetrical character models after a had been posed. In addition, during procedural modeling, most generators within Cinema 4D now support vertex map and vertex color tags. Polygon selections on primitive and generators can also be generated procedurally using fields. Two will be support for soft bodies within Cinema 4D Unified Simulation Framework. In addition, the new Unified Simulation Framework introduced in Cinema 4D S26 for clothes and robes has now been extended to support soft bodies in general, including plastic deformation. Now, the software automatically generates pull constraints within a soft body, with users able to control its faces properties by adjusting their settings or using fields to control their directions. Soft bodies can now interact with other objects in the scene controlled by the framework and simulations can now be combined with keyframe animation. According to Magazine, the new soft body system, which is GPU accelerated, is also significantly faster than old bullet phases based systems. Three would be advanced development on Go's bridge to ZBrush. 
The ghost bridge is purposely meant for transferring models between Cinema 4D and ZBrush. The bridge now transfers subdivision surface edge weighing and vertex weighing data. Also, handling of ZBrush's polygroups have been improved. This gives us the opportunity to import materials from ZBrush. Users can also now choose to create either standard Cinema 4D or Redshift materials based on texture maps or ZBrush polypaint data. Cinema 4D is super easy to use, flexible but expensive. But there is good news. Good, good, sweet news. 3D's Max for Indie and Maya for Indie is back cheaper than Cinema 4D. 3D Studios Max license retails for 1545 a year or 195 per month as an ongoing subscription. This is the studio price that for many solo artists and smaller studios out there is a bit hard to acquire. The 3D Studios Max and Maya Indie license are available for 250 per year, which means both will cost 500. Before you get too excited, there are some downsides to it. Should I say downsides? Anyways, Autodesk has outlined the following requirements for anyone seeking an indie license. 1. Annual gross revenue not in excess of 100,000 USD per year. 2. One license per user or organization. 3. License limited to US, UK, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. Now, Autodesk is regarded as a leader in the 3D field when it comes to fair pricing for its products. They offer an incredible educational license program that allows free use of many of their popular programs. This includes 3D's Max, Maya, Revit, AutoCAD, Inventor, Fusion 360, and many other software packages. These licenses require one to be a currently enrolled student and aren't very useful to fresh graduates and freelancers. The indie license clocks in around $20 per month, which should be doable for anyone generating income as a 3D artist. You don't get full access to their Autodesk catalog like the educational license provides, but it's still far better than paying for the full $200 per month. I am not an author of confusion, but another quick question. Why has Autodesk suddenly reconsidered an indie license to 3DS Max and Maya? The answer is Blender. Blender. The latest Blender update is killer and Autodesk has come to realize the need for a quick move to avoid Blender from continuing to steal more of their loyal customers. Okay, so I'm done, but a quick one here. I'm actually giving out all the courses that I've acquired over the years. I call it the God Complete Course on 3D's Max Maya Houdini. No, I'm not sure of Houdini, but after Effect, Premiere Pro, Adobe Audition, Blender, and Black Magic Fusion, dropping hopefully by the end of this month. Now, what I did was to keep them all in a Google Drive worth about 40 to 50 gigabytes of memory. So, you would have to download them from that particular video's description when I drop it. Now, the flip side to this God course is that I'm not going to turn on the notification for this video. So, yeah, I just hope you see it and enjoy it. It's just going to be for lucky people. I hope you download them and enjoy free courses. Peace out.